Okay, so that is about the backup. Now, when you have backed up the file, you can restore it in smart tree at a later date. So, let me go through now with the smart tree system one by one in functionality, all the functions. So, the reason for this training, right, why we are doing the road show is basically all of us are intelligent and we all know how the function works, but sometimes some of the buttons may not be so familiar. And because we are, for example, you are using WhatsApp all the time, suddenly you change to some other <laughs> other messaging platform, it becomes hard to track the button, especially when we get older, the buttons you cannot recall. So, we are trying to get you familiar with the system. So, we go to Smart V3 is all to the man, Smart V3, okay. Smart V3 go to the learning. Okay. So, this is basically a system which we I have created for you. Now, what Zul and I are going to do is we are going to become the teacher and everyone will, will be the, you will all be the student. So, I will enroll you for a course called a demo course. Okay. The course is a demo course which will be in the system. So, now your course, to find your course, you go to my courses and you go to demo course FSSA. I think next time we call it, we put underscore parhutana na, the, yes. because we have to, because FSSA has two bhagya. One is the science, complex science, yeah. Yeah, we will do another training there. So, we want to underscore it later. So, we will go into the course and I will teach you from the teacher's perspective. So, I am a teacher and everyone else is a student. So, I will show you the different function. So, later on when you all go back to, if you all want to like experiment with the system, Zul, you can actually log in and we can create a course for you. So, when your actual course is ready, we will have a course. Uh, code for you, okay? Because currently, do you all know what you are teaching next semester? You have the program for next semester. Courses have been assigned already. Not yet. Already, already. So then we can you can give the list to Pan Melissa, and then we will synchronize in the system. So you are free to use Smart Tree or Smart Tree. If you want to use Smart Tree, you can use Smart Tree. Okay. So this is your course. Uh, the ho ho how it looks. The most important button is this one, the green button. Okay, the green button is turn editing on. So that's the most important button, and it'll t change to red. Okay. Okay, you cannot. Yeah, yeah. I, no, I will just show you all how it's done. So, but the instruction is in the in the video. So you'll see how it's done. So the most important button here is the turn editing on button. Okay. So don't worry about today. We have only until 11:30, I think, right, for the training. 11:30. So don't worry about the training. We'll be doing the IDP training for the full day in JTMK. So, you can join the IDP training with the computer and then I will instruct you all for two days for the full day on the full training. This is just to get you familiar with the system. Okay, so, do not worry about it. Okay, so, now your your system, right? Your system is basically divided into section. Okay, and in the earlier system, you have to keep going in, going out, going in when you want to edit, right? This one is very easy. So, the first one, do not change this one. This is actually the announcement section. Do not change because this is all your important announcement. If you want to change this to your topic, you can just click on the pen here, okay, click and then you write, see it gives you very clear escape to cancel, enter. So, you write lecture 1. For example, this is lecture 1, okay. So, lecture 1 will be straight away. It's there. No need to go in, Kalor, Masuk. Every time you have to go out, come in, right? This one is direct into the system. Okay. So, that is the first part. The next part is this one. Okay. So, now you want to add your 1732. It is actually here. Add an activity or resource. So, it is click on that. But this is where it is slightly different and where, where it may be slightly different, more confusing. Okay. So, you have here assignment, uh, assignment. You have big blue button. You have chat, choice, database, external tool, feedback, forum. So, have you seen the logos are slightly different? So, we may get confused because the first one is actually, the last time for feedback is actually like trumpet, right? There's a, something like a trumpet and then, so this one is slightly different, okay? So, this is the thing. So, we go down and you have SCOM package, survey, synopsis, wiki, workshop and then you have resources and file. So, okay, the first thing I'm going to do is upload my lecture note. So, lecture note will be the file, okay? So, we'll go up, okay, file, okay, file. Just click file, okay, and then upload one file, add a file, and then just any file, PDF file, okay. So, okay, now comes down to what Prof Hong was telling about protecting your lecture content. Now, remember something, we all take our lecture note for granted because we say it's uh, just a lecture note, but actually the lecture note is your creative content. You have created it. So, it's actually a material which can be copyrighted. But we don't do that, right? So many of the time, lecture will upload the lecture, and then your student go and teaching forestry somewhere. They'll download it and reuse it. But do they attribute you? Last time there was a lecturer some years ago who was very angry. She used to give on the 
pen drive and then up, she, the student upload and then she became lecturer in Trangano or somewhere and then using. So she was angry because they used the same lecture without acknowledging her. Now when you do the OER repository, when, they, when you deposit in the OER, as I told you, you can deposit your PDF there and then you can link here, you link the lecture. If the student ever copy a lecture, it will be tracked in the repository. Because they, repository, they cannot copy a lecture without, your, without citing you. They can copy it, but they need to cite you. The original lecture was Professor so-and-so, Dr. so-and-so. So when you do this system, right, you have two options. One is to upload PDF file directly. He upload a PDF or any, any content. And the other one is to link it to the repository. If you link it, you need to insert the link. Then the student cannot download and copy. They need to track. The, the repository will track who has downloaded it. So the repository has its own data file, uh, like a register. So that's the way to protect yourself. So do this because we are in because actually this is all your intellectual property. You don't understand because you're spending your time, your effort, your energy to create the content. But what is your reward for that? You don't get it any reward. But if you protect it in this way, you can actually publish your compiled lecture notes as well. Okay, so that's why we tell you all the time: please protect your content. And don't deposit into uh, like a database which is like external. Like for example, we are using Schoology. I also use Schoology, Blackboard, all those ones. But the problem is once you deposit it there, you basically lost your copyright. Because in the fine line of the agreement, right, it says that the content which is shared, the, uh, the end user content is basically uploading it. They have the right on our content. So when we deposit it in the repository, actually protect yourself and your content. Okay, so that's why we are highlighting this again and again protect your content okay so this is the file he has put in his file here okay and then you put on your okay this is one very important button so he upload the file normally right you click activity completion okay now this is a very important thing to track whether the student are actually downloading a lecture or just view and then just say oh we viewed the lecture okay this is a very important button so click here so okay okay so show activity as complete when students when the condition is met so only when the student will download the lecture i don't know whether they, you won't know whether they read it but only when they download it and they get it then only the activity condition is met that they completed the activity okay this is important because the system is tracking the students as well is tracking the student analytics to see who's lagging behind who's down so if you for example I, how they use analytics is like this suppose you have 50 students in the class and you found 10 students who are lagging behind they are always scoring low you go back to the system you check the activity tracker if the activity is low maybe you have to do some intervention like calling them for tutorial or something else so the system actually tracks all these functions very well okay Okay, now you know how to see. Okay, so that's your expect. If you want them to do a, by a certain date, you can set the date. Okay, and then you save and display. Save and display. Okay, so now the lecture gets displayed on the system. Okay, le lecture note is in the system. The the good thing about this system is that when a student uses a handphone or tablet, it'll actually open up as a normal page. It won't open up as our smart 2, which is not formatted well for because using a system known as Angular 2.0. So Angular 2.0 allows the student to use the handphone as a method, as a system. Okay, go back to the course. Okay. So you have now your lecture note one. Okay, to save yourself for, from that thing about 1732, right? I would suggest that you put feedback for each and every topic. Okay, so you just add an activity to your resource. Okay, and then you add feedback. Feedback. Okay, so feedback on lecture one. Just put feedback on lecture one. So you have feedback, so you are safe. Because for blended learning, it's very important that they give feedback. Okay, just put feedback for lecture one. Okay, feedback for lecture one. And then give them instruction, lecture one. And then just put, please post your feedback here. Please post your feedback on lecture one here. For example, you are discussing some controversial topic about forestry, about uh, zoning or you need to or legal aspect you can give them a feedback to discuss so you just tell them discuss your comments over here okay so here and then you do okay this one you don't select that okay okay this one for the feedback for the activity completion do not select that unless you're scoring them for it because unfair so suppose you told the student uh, listen uh, come for my lecture and uh, provide feedback and you will get you will be graded based on the feedback then you can click on this one you click on this and then you can show the activity as complete when condition are met. If you are not going to do the grading, like on the basis of the feedback, don't leave it. Leave it open for everyone, for so they can feed, give feedback. 
Okay, some lecturers they will say uh, the student after completion of lecture you answer this question, so that should come in the feedback. So it's a kind of a feedback in the class, so you can use this system. Okay, so that's it. So save and display. Actually, this has many functionalities which I cannot show you in two hours. You have to attend. The, when I do the IDP, I will show all the functionalities about all these competencies trainings. Okay, so. So this one is actually a feedback form. Okay, now I want you to do something. I want you to go to your terminal and I want you to type some feedback. Just type anything. Just random some words. Some yes, doctor. Oh, because you're uh, now uh, I'm the instructor. You're the I'm teaching you from the instructor. I'm the instructor. You're the student. So uh, now, yeah. So when you want to become an instructor, Zul will give you all the after the after I finish my training. You all will all be assigned as lecturer again. So now we have assigned you as a student doctor inside. You, you cannot do anything, but you can key in the feedback. So now if you go into your student portal, okay, you type anything you want to type. You click the feedback and you type. Just type something, A, B, C, or just, I just want to show you how it works. Okay, just type. Okay, so it's refreshing. So I can see here. Okay. This is very good in the class to find out who is listening and who is not listening in your class of like 50 students. So if everyone is active, you will see 50 feedback. <laughs> so if they are not active, you won't see any feedback. <laughs> just type. Just type. You cannot see? Uh, cannot see? Sit up. Uh, okay. No question. No question. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Set up. Uh, just give a uh, long text answer, longer text answer. Okay, okay, set. Okay, okay. Save, save, save. Save, save. Yeah, just click, click. click. Okay, just put any question. How are you feeling today? <laughs> okay, okay. Okay, save, save. Okay, wait now huh, one second. We have to refresh, huh? Refresh. Refresh, huh? One second. Wait, wait, wait for a while. Okay, refresh, refresh. Refresh, refresh, refresh. Because you can uh, speed. Okay, you can see, right? Okay, just type something. <laughs> Hungry, okay, food is there. <laughs> okay, so questions have come. Click enter and then show response. Okay, there, see. So you got response number one. Okay. So, you, so in this system, you can use uh, you you can use the system to monitor your class. That's the whole idea of blended learning. How many of you all use Kahoot? Anyone using Kahoot? Kahoot. No one uses Kahoot. Use Kahoot in class. Use Kahoot. Who uses? No one uses Kahoot, okay. Actually, Kahoot.it, just show you, Sekeja, Sekeja Pali. I don't want to distract you for a while, but I just show you what is Kahoot. Okay, this is actually Kahoot. It's a very, very engaging platform in class, if you all use it, okay. Kahoot contains quizzes. You all use, you all use Kahoot, okay. All the students who are young students love the Kahoot. Because the Kahoot actually gives a quiz, it sets up a game in the class. Okay, so I cannot show you all today because I need to show you how to set it up and everything as it takes time. But Kahoot actually got game. Now the beauty of Kahoot is that if you develop a lecture, for example, you develop a quiz on forestry, uh, anywhere in the world, anyone can access your quiz on forestry and play your game. It's like, and then when they play the game, your score goes up in Kahoot. Your your rating goes up because people are using your game. Okay, and you can use other people's game as well. So it's developed by teachers for teachers, and there are free images, free content inside the Kahoot. So it's very good. Okay, you can set up many kind of quizzes, and it does it like a game gamification. So usually, when the beginning of the class, I give them Kahoot. <coughs> so once they do Kahoot, they're all happy, excited. And then once they finish their class, I do Kahoot again to see how much they learned. So it's a very good way to engage students. So you try it. And they can do use it on their handphone, on any device. It's perfectly okay. It works well. Okay. <coughs> okay, so Azul, you close that Kahoot. Okay, so this is similar. So now you can see your data. You click on Analysis, Zul. Analysis. Okay. Analysis. Okay. So you can see the data of... Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So you can see all the data, and this is analysis. Uh, if you do any mathematical function, you can actually perform analysis in this part. <laughs> so you have 
seven answers, one question with seven answers, okay? So maybe you do your lecture and you talk about some phenomenon, symbiosis, and explain what you learned about symbiosis, and you should see 50 answers on symbiosis, otherwise it means they didn't understand symbiosis, okay? So you can pull it down here on this, okay? So that's it, okay? So go back to the, so that's about the, go back to your course. Okay, so coming down back, okay. So this is our lecture one, so now we created a lecture, so our lecture will be there, there will be feedback in the class during lecture, and now we want an assignment, so add an activity or resource, and then you add an assignment, assignment here, Assign. okay, add. So assignment, now this is the limitation for assignment, uh, is the file size, we cannot exceed 10 MB, right. So don't ask the student to make very big assignment, just 10 MB is too big, because if they put all the gumbar and all the things inside, it's going to become too big. So we have a limitation of size because server, we can only go up to 10 MB. So give a value, so assignment for lecture one. Don't give them too many assignment, as it creates overload for their cognitive load. So we cannot overload, so maybe maximum three assignment for the whole, and it's load for you also, because every assignment you have to click review and mark. Okay, so it's a assignment is an issue. Assignment for lecture one, display description on course space, always click here. Okay, so you have to give the clear instruction in the assignment, including very important a rubric and the LO. So the, you, for example, upon completion of this assignment, you will, your learning outcome, you will demonstrate the ability to, always state the LO, and then the rubric. For example, rubric, if your assignment is uh, literature uh, report, so how many mark you'll get for literature review, how many mark you'll get for for the material method, you need to state that in the in this part. Okay, and then you do, you say go down. If you want to give them a, like a tutorial, you can upload your PDF here. And this is very important for assignment, is you need to, if you want to give assignment by deadline, it's always good to set the deadline for assignment because all the lecturers are very busy, you cannot wait for the student, wait, wait, wait. So you need to set a lock date. For example, one week after your lecture, you close. The so you set up the lock dates for this. You have to need to enable all this. For example, you say cut off date, okay? Cut off date, enable. And then you need to set a valid date. For example, you don't give them too close, like one day. Maybe it will be four days, five days. But otherwise, if you don't do this, your workload will increase because they, they will keep on putting assignment in the server. You cannot track which assignment is from which. So it it's nightmare after that. It's, please do this. It's actually a form of discipline for the student. They have to do it, otherwise they will get a penalty. But you need to state the penalty. For example, if you submit after so and so, buka system, then I have to deduct lima marka. So you just deduct. Okay, so you have to state that. Okay, so you have set up all the thing. So this one is okay. This one you no, don't need to do. And then you need to set up the. Okay, this is the common old result. Ah, this one. Okay, so this one also you need to set up always. Student can. When the when the condition met, only when they submit the assignment, it will show us progress on the bar. The progress bar. So each student in the system will have a progress bar. So once the student complete, they will get a progress report. Okay, so that's it. And then save and return to the course. Save and display or save and return to the course. Okay. Can any of you submit an assignment? Uh, can any of you just submit a uh, just a PDF file? Can you submit? Wait for a while. It will come. Any of you can submit? Just submit something. I will show you how it works. Just submit Kosong page also is okay. Just submit a PDF file, okay? So go back to lecture one, okay? What you do, you click here, you click, where's the, where's the, where's the assignment? You need to add, add, I think not edit, will not save as yet, add an activity resource assignment, okay? Set off, add, wait for a while, wait for, wait for it to load, okay? So just create, as, just create assignment one, assignment one, upload here, in the meantime, up, just let upload here, upload here, instruction, just, just put, and then display description on course page, okay, enable everything, and then you just save, 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 save this one, one minute, one minute, one minute, okay. just click submission type, allowing PDF, just click submission type, okay, 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 okay done, done, save, save, save it, yep, and then save save and return to the course, wait for it to cycle through, so circle, once it cycle through, it's basically in, okay, 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 save, save and display, okay, now you can go, I think save and display now, 
Okay. Disable that will disable to date because for the exercise now we just disable. Later on can enable. Okay. Now now you see. I think for today we can just show them and next time we show them how the function function is later on. So in the meantime, any one of you can just make one blank page and upload. Sure. Okay, so now you can see. Okay, so this is the assignment and this is the date. So just click and upload. Uh, blank page also will be okay. P just a PDF, a song. So now we have 20 of us in the class. We are 20. So now you know how many students submitted. It comes on your system. Earlier you could not because it's quite hard to track who's submitting what. Wait, huh? Is it responding? One submit already, Sudha? Okay. So, okay, I'll just, one. Uh, all I need is one, okay? Now you need to see the, the thing about, the, okay, see how we used to work earlier. We go to the system, then we download, right, the assignment, assessment, the assignment we have to download. It becomes a very big uh, problem. Some, some lecturers, suppose you cannot see clearly, you have to print it out also. Then the lecturer complains, you have to print out everything. So, the thing is, you need to set the rubric and you can grade in the system itself, okay? So once you want to grade the assignment, so you view all the submission, all you do is click grade, grade, okay, grade, okay, grade the submission, click the blue button, grade. Now, wait for a while, click those, those are the coming from, okay, wait for a while, it's loading the system. Okay, you can see the, it's actually waiting for more submissions, so it's circling. See, oh, somebody has demo, uh, Download, you can see so the user, the one who has downloaded, cannot. Loading the submission. Yeah. It's loading the assignment into the system. So it's assuming there are 20 people and waiting for 20 assignment. So you go, you go back, you go back, you back to the previous one, previous page. Okay, you can actually view here. It's actually assuming there are 20 of us and then it's waiting for 20 assignment before it shows. Okay, so you can see the user here who has the, uh, submitted for grading. So here, here, okay. So click here grade. <laughs> so you can see the time which they submit and everything else. In, Okay, great, 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 click, great, Sudha, click. Yeah, this is the problem, ah, okay. Just click save changes, save. just click save changes. Okay, the system, the speed of the line is slow. But what is important is that you will see the, you can, uh, you get a column to grade the mark and you can ma mark it directly in the system. There's no need to keep on downloading, printing. This is not in the system. Okay, today it's slow, so it takes time because of the server speed. Okay, now the important thing about, blend this is the important part about assignment on blended learning. Always leave a comment in the assignment. For example, the student completed, you can write, well done, please improve on so and so. The comment is very important because the system tracks our feedback with the student, okay? So we are going to have a competition this year for, for lecturers to present their content. Okay, it's a, because we are going to select lecturer to go for the national level competition. So make sure that you have a lot of feedback from your student because the feedback is one of the criteria which is judged at the national level. And to do the judging of the lecturer for the ACRI and all the awards, they will actually check your level of the feedback from the student. Okay, so we leave this for a while because it's going to take time. It's waiting for everyone to load the system. It's waiting for 20 of us. Yes, you'll just mark that, mark that thing huh? later on to Avang. Tell him later, later. Now just mark it because it takes, it waits for all the 20 students before it actually makes a, a, a before it shows the. So it will only allow. Okay, just click. Okay. Okay, so we'll let the system do. In the meantime, I go to the next part. Go back to that zone. The next one, lecture one. The lecture. One. Okay, Nemo course. 
okay so now you have your lecture so you have so basically you have your lecture you have the feedback and you have the assignment now i'll show you two more functions very briefly which are a little bit more interactive okay one of them is for live lectures so any of you all do live lecture live lecture means you sit on the computer and you student okay now in this you can you, you remember something about live lecture when you do live lecture it's actually counted at face to face as face to face so suppose i'm away for conference and i want to do a live lecture i can sit in the conference in my hotel room or in the conference room privately set up the terminal and i can do a live lecture for my whole class okay at a specific time and it's recorded as a attendance for a lecture it counts as face to face so the way you do it it's difficult to do so how we normally do it is by using skype we can use uh, zoom the zoom also have you all used google meet google meet in ums so ums has google meet okay we have this three so we have google meet in ums as part of our, our email system we have google meet we can meet up with our colleagues on google meet okay but what we use in this system for educators is something known as big blue button now all the ipta and ipts in malaysia are using big blue button because it is a free open source platform okay i will show you how to set it up